Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about Java. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Hi Frederick, you mentioned that you have worked with projects using Java before. I assume that's for an enterprise kind of company, the bank, banks or insurance types of companies. I wonder what do you think of the their engineering culture compared to what you're doing now, which is which I assume is a startup. Is there much difference? I'm stuck with Java for now, and I noticed that the company company that are using Java usually are you also using old tools like Subversion, Strut, Struts uh, with JSP. I'm worried to pursue, uh, I'm worried about pursuing a job path because I don't know if my value as a developer will deteriorate over the years. Hope you can make a video on this topic. Well, uh, my two cents on this is that your value as a software developer, well, for, first and foremost, the first thing that you're describing, okay, you're using a Subversion like right off the bat you're losing them you're like I'm not saying that you're this is not the end of the world but yes like no sane company these no no sane company these days is going to use subversion unless they got in really early into the whole thing and that's kind of the thing that I've been saying in a few videos now guys when you come to a place of work their tech stack which you will know before you sign up for the company before you even put your name on the on the form or your the contract you will know what their tech stack is because they're going to tell you if you ask them and this is the thing that i keep telling people when you are an experienced software developer you will know what to place your bets on always it's not that sim it's not as simple as saying that oh yeah this company uses all the trendy tools there trendy tools therefore it's a good company but it will give you an indication in other words if you see that somebody's using subversion that should tell you something Subver if, because if you're an like, I mean if you are an experienced developer you will know that subversion is re like depending now like I'm not saying that it's never used but it's not really the thing that people are using Git as an example or Mercurial are like it's the it's, they are the main things and like using JSP as an example in Java I mean JSP is old like really old it's not the, once again it's not the end of the world and here's the kicker guys there's a lot of companies who are using older more outdated tools and you can make a good living of working with these tools as well and just uh, just as with anybody like i mean if you go and you go into a new trendy company it really doesn't matter what tools they're using per se unless your aim is to increase your market value the most or your aim is to become like a specialist in these tools because it's it's just another another suite of tools and as long as you have something that is adjacent that is similar to that thing companies will consider you because you've already you, you have the core skills you all have proven that you're a competent software developer who knows Java why would you not be and you learn subversion struts and JSP why would you not be able to learn I don't know spring or spring boot or something like do you see what I'm saying like why why would you not be able to pick up the next thing well you will it's just so so don't like picking the right stacks and working with relevant tools is important but don't look at it as like the end of the world because if you go to a company and you see that they they have like tons of good seniors who are mentoring you and so forth then using an older tool is not the end of the world but yes it over time it's not a good thing for you to do that because that's that's kind of the whole IT is moving all the time and if you're stuck working with really outdated tools it will affect your market value in the future um, depending on of course what your aim goals are so when it comes to a culture thing though I want to stop you and kind of say something y yes yes I work for a startup or I used to work for a startup and Yes, Java is used in enterprises, but it's not exclusively used in enterprises. Not by a long shot. Java is fairly universal. It's used by quite a lot of different companies. And the culture, that's another thing though, where you, you really have to get that. Uh, if, you are, if you are working in a startup 
or if you're working in an enterprise, the choices in tech stack that you have are really not down to whether or not you're in a startup or an enterprise. Like the, the, the differences between the like the enterprises and the startups are really not found there. Because I mean, I work with enterprises, I've, uh, I've interviewed for co companies like enterprises who use Go as an example. And I've been to startups where they use like .NET and like there's nothing wrong with like it or like Java or something like that. So what I'm saying is that you have to think about it as how old is the project usually and who's behind it. So an example would be if you had a greenfield project today and the people in the company who well they bet on say subversion as an example or JSP or so forth uh, with their Java stack that should raise some concern. It might mean that I mean it's, if it's an enterprise, like it might mean that yeah, this is the thing they know. They have like this tech lead or this CTO type of person who like that's what they know and that's it. Yes, that's that that happens. It does happen, and this is like one of the. This is why people like especially the banking industry. Holy shit, they're looking for people who are in their twenties and their thirties because they want to get rid, or rather they don't get rid per se, but they want to get in new blood who can update their tools and help them move things in that direction because like the I'm not gonna go all politically uh, political and project a lot of stuff on you guys but guys at some point unfortunately a lot of these bigger organizations get stuck with uh, experienced people who are outdated they don't care really anymore about the latest tenderest tech. They just kind of want to stick with what they know, and this is natural and so forth. But that's not the thing that is healthiest for the company. You want hungry people usually, well, with a bit of a balance, but that's a different video, uh, to push things. And that's the thing. You can find that in an enterprise, and you can find it in a startup. Sure, it might be more common in a startup, but on the other hand, a startup, uh, the attitude towards tooling there is reliability above all else usually because everything is in delivery speed 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 and depending on the startup that you go to they might be very open to using experimental tech and like so forth depending on who's leading it but in many cases they may not be because they have no money they can't risk having a lot of like experimentation and like wasted time on like problematic tools and so forth they're gonna use the things that are most relevant here and now because it's the thing that they're starting with and it's more advanced and like oh usually better and further ahead than the thing that you was relevant for uh, like 10 or 20 years ago but remember that's going to happen to them as well in 10 years there's going to be another startup or some person is going to ask me a question where they're going to say oh frederick i'm working for this enterprise and oh, they're using go or oh they're using uh, they're using git or they're using kubernetes or something like that it's so outdated like, am i going to lose my market value and then the whole thing start over because some like something else is going to come along and very few companies like update their entire tech stack every 10 years some do but not like it's uh, you, you have to think about these things as trends continue guys and not every single like it's you don't play catch up uh, in every single company in many cases companies find something that works for them and they kind of stay on that and i'm just going to leave it at that so what i want you to take away from this is that the culture differences in enterprises and uh, startups when it as in when it comes to tooling I argue that that usually does, it, it's really not something that you can say. You cannot say, and I know that some people think that way, that if you're working for an enterprise, you're using old tools. That's not true. And it's not true that if you're using, working for a startup, you're using the latest and the trendiest stuff. It's not always true. It's usually most true because a younger company usually has a younger code base and they start out with younger tools if that makes sense. The enterprises that usually have the oldest tools and like the organizations that have them are usually people, you know, it's usually companies who have older code bases, they've been long, around longer and they don't really update and so forth. And sure, there are enterprises like that, but you, they're not exclusive in any way. So it's not like, yes, because you work for an enterprise, you're going to work with old tools. I promise you that's not the case. So what you really need to think about is 
what is like before you get into any of these companies like ask yourself what is your value system if you want to have a relevant portfolio or a stack on your CV then you should know what are the most relevant tools today and it's very easy either like you do uh, like you do the thing that I usually say go and look at the job postings that's the easiest thing or you go and talk to developers like real actual developers who know like who know their stuff who are working in fairly like you can look you can talk to the startups and so forth because they usually use the trendiest stuff and then you kind of know what is the most relevant thing right here and right now but start with the job postings that's usually the safest best have a great day